in the short rather nice construction and useful one associated to the hyperbolic geometry okay. so firstly what is the circular to infinity well in the Poincare disk model that is the unit disk well that's the D this is hyperbolic plane well this is the circle at infinity there's nothing to say about it it's a circle what about the upper half plane H well remember this corresponds to the circle at infinity by the map Z minus I goes to Z plus I so in this case boundary of H is going to be real line but also a point infinity okay and remember, I did this map, infinity maps to the finite point 1. So I can regard S1 as being the boundary of disk. And R union infinity, which is a topologically the one-point compactification of R, as being the circle. Okay. Now what can we do with this? Let's just look at geodesics. And S1 infinity. Let's look in the disk model first. Okay, so let's take a geodesic. Recall what that is. That's a pair of points here and here and an arc joining this, which intersects the boundary at right angles. Well, what does this mean? Well, remember that this means, of course, that the tangent to this circle is perpendicular to the tangent to the other circle, okay, to the circle at infinity. And so, the radial vector to this circle, the circle of which this is a chord, is going to be perpendicular here and here. So, the circle has a center at the intersection point of these two red lines. Okay. So, now you can see from this construction that as soon as I had this chord, I could find a unique point at infinity. Okay. Sorry, I could determine a circle corresponding to it okay so what this tells you is that there is a bijective correspondence correspondence uh, between geodesics and well s1 infinity cross s1 infinity well uh, not exactly if I have to have, have oriented so minus the diagonal because the reversing symmetry okay so this is the a point given a pair of points at infinity I can do this construction and find something that intersects it at uh, uh, intersects a, a geodesic joining these two pair of points so that means it's an arc of a circle which intersects these orthogonally and this is a canonical construction so this is a natural one-to-one -one correspondence. There's one more case to consider here, which is that I have a pair of points so that the two lines that I have drawn here, the red lines, end up being parallel. Well, when does that happen? That happens exactly when the line joining these through passes through the center of the circle. Okay, in that case, this is the unique geodesic joining those two, and it happens to be a diagonal. Now, no other chord works because no other chord is actually perpendicular to both endpoints. Yeah. So, the, in either case, given a geodesic, you get a pair of points which it ends. But given a pair of points, you can canonically associate to it the, the only geodesic that passes through them. Okay. So, geodesics and S1 infinity in H. Here's another situation. What happens in the hyperbolic plane? Here we have again two cases. One of them is if I take a point here and I take infinity. Well, in that case, you can immediately guess that the geodesic in question is the vertical line. So this is the vertical line. And now if I have, on the other hand, a pair of points both on the real line, then what you get is uh, that you have a uh, green, uh, sorry, the green line here is intersecting this 
at 90 degrees. Well, the only way this happens is exactly that this is a circle whose center is on the real line and which has uh, center which is the midpoint of the two endpoints. So what has happened in this case, these are the two kinds of geodesics, either a vertical line or a circle intersecting the real line and uh, right angles. Okay. And given any pair of points which are distinct, so at most one of them is infinity, uh, you get a unique corresponding geodesic in one case. In the other case, you take the midpoint of these two and draw the circle. So either way, we have uh, a nice correspondence. So this is the value of S1 infinity. But we do want to see one more little fact, which is infinity is at infinity. Well, what do I mean by this? Let's look at the upper half plane. And let's take, so this is the upper half plane. And let's take one particular geodesic on it. Okay. Let's say this is the point 0. This is the point 1. Okay. Now, I said the point 0 is at infinity. But in Euclidean terms, it's at a finite distance away. Okay. But what is it in, term, in hyperbolic terms? So what is this length? On the other hand, what is the other length in question, this one? Well, this certainly looks infinite. But remember, we have rescaled in the hyperbolic metric. Maybe we rescaled so much that it becomes finite. Well, let's calculate these lengths. Remember what they are. This is integral from 0 to 1. If I take this path of length 1, dy, Euclidean case, it would just be this. But you divide it by y. Okay. And in the other situation, the green length in question is integral from 1 to infinity of dy by y. Well, what are these lengths? Well, they are in both cases, it's log y. In one case, evaluated from 0 to infinity. So we get a term which is log of minus infinity. This is infinite. And in the other case, okay, you get again log y, evaluated from 1 to infinity. But this is infinite. You see, here this is related to the fact that see, this integral is very closely related to the harmonic series. The harmonic series being infinite is what gives you this uh, length. Okay. So what this tells you is that at least so far given this particular geodesic, given this particular point on it, segments on both sides are of infinite length. Now if you are given any other point on the same geodesic, um, here, uh, let's say, well, the piece between them is finite. So you can immediately conclude that the segments on either side of this one are also of infinite length, okay, just by addition. And uh, what about another geodesic? Well, there are enough symmetries. We saw that you can take any geodesic to any other geodesic by a hyperbolic isometry. So this fact holds for all geodesics. Okay, so the circle of infinity, and finally, in the Poincare disk, well, we have this correspondence z minus i by z plus i, which is a hyperbolic isometry. So if I take a point here and this side, well, this corresponds to a geodesic in the hyperbolic upper half plane with the same metric. And so the result is that again in this, the distance is infinite. Okay, So the circle of infinity is in fact at infinite distance away from any given point in the interior of hyperbolic space.